Hey there, I'm hoping this is going to be a wonderful day for you. One thing we know, the Lord is with us. Today is day number 46 in our reading calendar, and we read Exodus 30 and 31, Psalm 4, and our second reading in Luke 4. Let's turn to Exodus 30. Yesterday we heard the instructions for consecrating the priests for their special work. Exodus 30. The Lord is speaking. Make an altar out of acacia wood for burning incense. It is to be square, 18 inches long and 18 inches wide. It is to be 36 inches high. Its projections at the four corners are to form one piece with it. Cover its top, all four sides, and its projections with pure gold, and put a gold border around it. Make two gold carrying rings for it, and attach them below the border on two sides to hold the poles with which it is to be carried. Make these poles of acacia wood and cover them with gold. Put this altar outside the curtain which hangs in front of the covenant box. That is the place where I will meet you. Every morning when Aaron comes to take care of the lamps, he is to burn sweet-smelling incense on it. He must do the same when he lights the lamps in the evening. This offering of incense is to continue without interruption for all time to come. Do not offer on this altar any forbidden incense, any animal offering, or any grain offering, and do not pour out any wine offering on it. Once a year, Aaron is to perform the ritual for purifying the altar by putting on its four projections the blood of the animal sacrificed for sin. This is to be done every year for all time to come. This altar is to be completely holy, dedicated to me, the Lord. The Lord said to Moses, When you take a census of the people of Israel, each man is to pay me a price for his life, so that no disaster will come on him while the census is being taken. Everyone included in the census must pay the required amount of money, weighed according to the official standard. Everyone must pay this as an offering to me. Everyone being counted in the census, that is, every man twenty years old or older, is to pay me this amount. The rich man is not to pay more, nor the poor man less. When they pay this amount for their lives, collect this money from the people of Israel and spend it for the upkeep of the tent of my presence." This tax will be the payment for their lives, and I will remember to protect them. The Lord said to Moses, Make a bronze basin with a bronze base. Place it between the tent and the altar, and put water in it. Aaron and his sons are to use the water to wash their hands and feet before they go into the tent or approach the altar to offer the food offering. Then they will not be killed. They must wash their hands and feet so that they will not die. This is a rule which they and their descendants are to observe forever. The Lord said to Moses, Take the finest spices, twelve pounds of liquid myrrh, six pounds of sweet-smelling cinnamon, six pounds of sweet-smelling cane, and twelve pounds of cassia, all weighed according to the official standard. Add one gallon of olive oil and make a sacred anointing oil mixed with perfume. Use it to anoint the tent of my presence, the covenant box, the table and all its equipment, the lamp stand and its equipment, the altar for burning incense, the altar for burning offerings, together with all its equipment, and the wash basin with its base. Dedicate these things in this way, and they will be completely holy, and anyone or anything that touches them will be harmed by the power of its holiness. Then anoint Aaron and his sons, and ordain them as priests in my service. Say to the people of Israel, This holy anointing oil is to be used in my service for all time to come. 
it must not be poured out on ordinary men, and you must not use the same formula to make any mixture like it. It is holy, and you must treat it as holy. Whoever makes any like it or uses any of it on anyone who is not a priest will no longer be considered one of my people. The Lord said to Moses, Take an equal part of each of the following sweet spices, stacked, onica, galbanum, and pure frankincense. Use them to make incense mixed like perfume. Add salt to keep it pure and holy. Beat part of it into a fine powder. Take it into the tent of my presence and sprinkle it in front of the covenant box. Treat this incense as completely holy. Do not use the same formula to make any incense like it for yourselves. Treat it as a holy thing dedicated to me. If anyone makes any like it for use as perfume, he will no longer be considered one of my people. Exodus 31 The Lord said to Moses, I have chosen Bezalel, the son of Uri, the grandson of Hur, from the tribe of Judah, and I have filled him with my power. I have given him understanding, skill, and ability for every kind of artistic work, for planning skillful designs and working them in gold, silver, and bronze, for cutting jewels to be set, for carving wood, and for every other kind of artistic work. I have also selected Aholiab, son of Ahisamach, from the tribe of Dan, to work with him. I have also given great ability to all the other skilled workers, so that they can make everything I have commanded to be made. The tent of my presence, the covenant box and its lid, all the furnishings of the tent, the table and its equipment, the lampstand of pure gold and all its equipment, the altar for burning incense, the altar for burnt offerings and all its equipment, the wash basin and its base, the magnificent priestly garments for Aaron and his sons to use when they serve as priests, the anointing oil and the sweet-smelling incense for the holy place. In making all these things, they are to do exactly as I have commanded you. The Lord commanded Moses to tell the people of Israel, Keep the Sabbath, my day of rest, because it is a sign between you and me for all time to come, to show that I, the Lord, have made you my own people. You must keep the day of rest because it is sacred. Whoever does not keep it but works on that day is to be put to death. You have six days in which to do your work, but the seventh day is a solemn day of rest dedicated to me. Whoever does any work on that day is to be put to death. The people of Israel are to keep this day as a sign of the covenant. It is a permanent sign between the people of Israel and me, because I, the Lord, made heaven and earth in six days, and on the seventh day I stopped working and rested. When God finished speaking to Moses on Mount Sinai, he gave him the two stone tablets on which God himself had written the commandments. Let's turn to Psalm 4. This is an evening hymn expressing our trust in God. The rabbis gave this the title, A Psalm by David. Psalm 4 Answer me when I pray, O God, my defender. When I was in trouble, you helped me. Be kind to me now and hear my prayer. How long will you people insult me? How long will you love what is worthless and go after what is false? Remember that the Lord has chosen the righteous for his own, and he hears me when I call to him. Tremble with fear and stop sinning. Think deeply about this when you lie in silence on your beds. 
Offer the right sacrifices to the Lord and put your trust in Him. There are many who pray, Give us more blessings, O Lord. Look on us with kindness. But the joy that you have given me, O Lord, is more than they will ever have with all their grain and wine. When I lie down, I go to sleep in peace. You alone, O Lord, keep me perfectly safe. Now let's turn for the second time to Luke 4. Yesterday we read of Jesus being tested by the devil, and we reread the story of how Jesus was rejected in his hometown. When Jesus had finished reading from that special place in Isaiah 61, he sat down. In our culture, we are likely to assume that sitting down was without the expectation of teaching. But in Jewish practice of the time, teachers sat down to teach. Frequently in the Gospels, we find Jesus taking a sitting position when teaching. Luke 4, starting at verse 22. They were all well impressed with him and marveled at the eloquent words that he spoke. They said, Isn't this the son of Joseph? He said to them, I'm sure that you will quote this proverb to me, Doctor, heal yourself. You will then also tell me to do here in my hometown the same things you heard were done in Capernaum. I tell you this, prophets are never welcomed in their hometown. Listen to me. It is true that there were many widows in Israel during the time of Elijah, when there was no rain for three and a half years, and a severe famine spread throughout the whole land. Yet Elijah was not sent to anyone in Israel, but only to a widow living in Zarephath, in the territory of Sidon. And there were many people suffering from a dreaded skin disease who lived in Israel during the time of the prophet Elisha. Yet not one of them was healed, but only Naaman the Syrian. When the people in the synagogue heard this, they were filled with anger. They rose up, dragged Jesus out of town, and took him to the top of the hill on which their town was built. They meant to throw him over the cliff, but he walked through the middle of the crowd and went his way. Then Jesus went to Capernaum, a town in Galilee, where he taught the people on the Sabbath. They were all amazed at the way he taught, because he spoke with authority. In the synagogue was a man who had the spirit of an evil demon in him. He screamed out in a loud voice, Ah, what do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Are you here to destroy us? I know who you are. You are God's holy messenger. Jesus ordered the spirit, Be quiet and come out of the man. The demon threw the man down in front of them and went out of him without doing him any harm. The people were all amazed and said to one another, What kind of words are these? With authority and power, this man gives orders to the evil spirits, and they come out. And the report about Jesus spread everywhere in that region. Jesus left the synagogue and went to Simon's house. Simon's mother-in-law was sick with a high fever, and they spoke to Jesus about her. He went and stood at her bedside and ordered the fever to leave her. The fever left her, and she got up at once and began to wait on them. After sunset, all who had friends who were sick with various diseases brought them to Jesus. He placed his hands on every one of them and healed them all. Demons also went out from many people, screaming, You are the Son of God! Jesus gave the demons an order and would not let them speak because they knew he was the Messiah. 
At daybreak, Jesus left the town and went off to a lonely place. The people started looking for him, and when they found him, they tried to keep him from leaving. But he said to them, I must preach the good news about the kingdom of God in other towns also, because that is what God sent me to do. So he preached in the synagogues throughout the country. Our God is awesome, and it's a great privilege to pray to Him. Please pray with me. Our Heavenly Father and our Lord Jesus, Jesus, you went away from Capernaum and went to a lonely place, and there we know you would have been praying. We thank you, Lord, that Through you, we have the privilege of praying to the Heavenly Father. Lord, like David in Psalm 4, we thank you that you have heard our prayers. We can have the confidence, Lord, that you hear us when we call to you. Because of that, Lord, you give us ever so much joy than those who simply have the riches of this world. We tremble before you, O Lord, and we ask you to help us stop sinning. And we ask you to help us think deeply about your word. Help us that even as we go to sleep, we will meditate on your word. Thank you for the joy you give us. And the other thing mentioned here is peace. We can go to sleep in peace and know that you hold us and protect us. We are perfectly safe with you.